Good day folks, my name is Quentin and I am majoring in biological sciences, ultimately seeking a degree in zoology at a four-year university. Now what is zoology you might ask? That's a branch of biology and it's concerned with the classification of the properties and vital phenomena of animals. Now like the many different spokes within a wheel, there's many different branches within zoology. Now I like this because it gives me many different options on what type of animal species that I want to specifically focus on. Now here's just a couple that I was really interested in. Ornithology, which is the study of birds, and mammalogy, which is the study of mammals. Now I realize that I probably have several years before I need to make this decision, but what I'm thinking is mammalogy is probably the broadest area of study and it would give me the best opportunity to get into this career field. Now, mammalogy is a specialized field of biology that deals specifically with the study and observation of mammals. Now, this could include many different aspects of mammalian life, including evolution, biological function, management, and more. Now, what exactly is it that a mammalogist does? Let's get down to the specifics. Mammalogists may do a number of different things depending on their area of specialty. And broadly, mammalogists study and observe different kinds of mammals. Many take interest in one specific type or of a group of mammal. They also plan and coordinate activities in which they assess the mammals. A mammalogist is a voice for the voiceless and sometimes they speak up about the concerns they have about the environment upon the animal's ecosystem. Mammalogists play a larger role within the scientific community as they connect with other scientists, professionals, and advocacy groups to preserve and monitor the habitats and populations of the animals in the wild and in protected environments. The mammalogist works closely with government agencies and the public as well as they draft reports and presentations for internal and external stakeholders, policy makers, and the public. Collecting samples and conducting research in the lab, the field, and protected environments is a big part of the job. Probably one of the most exciting aspects of this career field, in my opinion, is monitoring and documenting mammal behavior in the lab, the field, and protected environments. An important part of their job is to make sure that the data in the specimen collection and record keeping is accurate and adheres to relevant safety procedures. And networking and sharing information is very important as they link with national, regional, and international databases in order to share information and assessment data. In order for a mammologist to stay up to date, it's important for them to review current research and scientific literature in the field. Mammologists should be innovative and implement strategies and participate in associated sediment and flow monitoring. They should consult on and implement habitat mitigation and remediation measures. Consulting with others in the field on environmental and site assessments. And how adventurous would this be to travel to temporary field assignments in remote locations? I don't believe anything, however, beats seeing firsthand what someone does in this field of biology. So let's take a look at this short video by Lucy as she explains the day in the life of a zoologist. The day in the life of a zoologist is really, we come to work, we check all the animals, make sure everyone's okay, and then we start the daily routines of feeding, cleaning, training, and providing things like behavioural enrichment. Yeah, behavioural enrichment is really uh, providing activities for the animals so that they can exhibit their natural behaviours like they would in the wild. So I decided to become a zoologist um, because I've always loved animals. Um, and it's what I wanted to do my whole life. Uh, what inspires me about my job is the fact that we get to make um, a difference in the lives of the animals that we work with and we also get to contribute to conservation. You always want your breakfast. The most challenging part is definitely if anything happens to the animals, if they're getting sick or obviously if they pass away, which does occur, so that's always difficult to cope with. 
In regards to interacting with the public, yeah, that's a huge part of the job. Um, we do that on a daily basis, whether it's interacting with people who are just visiting um, and want to know things about the animals or providing tours as well. My advice, keep working hard, be persistent, get as much experience as you can and volunteering is a huge part. Um, I got into it through volunteering, um, that was how I initially started as well as through my studies. Um, so it really, really does help give you that edge against other people that are going for it as well. It's an amazing job, so much fun, every day is different. Um, highly recommend it, it's amazing. Some of the things mammologists may study include, but are not limited to, an animal's classifications among other species, the animal's anatomy, the animal's physiology, how the animal's role plays out in a larger ecosystem, the animal's behavior within its natural habitat, how this species of animal interacts with humans, now where would you find a mammologist working? It's quite commonplace to find them working in zoos. Within the scope of animal conservation, you'll also find them gainfully employed at game preserves. And quite often they're employed as curators of museums. Should they desire to go on to graduate school, they could become a professor at an academic institution. You could go to work for a government agency, such as the U.S. National Park Service or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Looking through the job openings, you'll also see on a local level, there's a large number of job openings in veterinary offices for mammologists. Unfortunately, the job demand for mammologists is only expected to grow about 5% in the next 10 years, which is slower than average, though increasing environmental concerns and a growing human population will increase demand for mammologists the number of positions open will largely depend on government budgets. The state of Florida actually ranks number three in the nation for the number of mammologists that it employs, coming in behind only California and Maine, with 1,350 employed, mainly by federal or state government. Now, Florida mammologists make on average about 45000 a year, which is just below the national average of 57000 which would be even kill with what the top 75% of Florida mammologists make of 57000 a year. Now I went on the glass door and done a little research into the Tampa Bay area, anyone that would hire someone that studied in the field of zoology. Mostly I found that there were veterinarian offices that were looking to hire someone that was in the field of zoology or a mammologist. Now I found it easiest when looking for reviews and also salaries to look into three large corporations in the Tampa Bay area and those were Bush Gardens, Tampa Lowry Park Zoo, and SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment in Orlando. Now remember that when we're looking at th these three type of corporations, they're all very similar, and by doing so, we're eliminating veterinarian offices and also museums and government agencies. So we're eliminating a lot of other possibilities. Now I certainly think that we should take all reviews into consideration, but one thing we should keep in mind as we're reading these is that many of these people that wrote these reviews are former employees or currently employed but disgruntled so they may be a bit biased. Now I tend to look at all the reviews and kind of average them out and get an idea that way but what I see reoccurring over and over again as far as a pro is that these folks really enjoy working with the animals. They also tend to enjoy the perks of vacation time and park passes for their family or free tickets for friends. While it seems that the cons are kind of biased towards management. Now it seems that a lot of the employees are noticing that the management are untrained or not fully trained, that they don't have degrees in biological sciences and they won't take into consideration the suggestions of employees that do have degrees or a higher education and know how to work with these animals daily. Employees are also upset about low wages, and rightfully so. Bush Gardens and Tampa Lowry Park Zoo pay on average between $10 and $14 an hour, which is way below the cost of living in the state of Florida. And SeaWorld as well, paying $27 an hour for an animal trainer 
and $17 an hour for an animal care specialist seems to be underpaid for that level of education. Now we should keep in mind that these are theme parks. They hire a large number of employees and they tend to pay just above minimum wage. I think one employee's review can be used to pinpoint the reason behind the low wages at some of these theme parks as she states that these are higher wages compared to some of the companies that hire zoologists. Yet they can be low considering that you can be replaced by someone willing to make minimum wage doing the same work that you're doing taking care of the animals. It sounds like to me that it's possible that this employee has heard this from the management when bartering for a higher wage. Now when compared with other careers that are attained by completing your college degree, these are certainly much lower wages. And that being said, I have to ask myself, why is it that I would be willing to complete a college degree in something that's not going to get me the best of money? And I think back to a time when I told my wife several years ago that if I could do anything in life, and if I could have got a degree, I should have got it in zoology because I have a passion and a love for animals, stemming back to my early childhood and my time spent with horses. And I'll never forget the first time I caught an episode of The Crocodile Hunter with Steve Irwin. His knowledge of these animal species was just astounding to me. It opened up a whole new world to understand that there's so much out there to learn about animals. His curiosity, knowledge, passion, and love for different animal species was contagious. And it helped foster within me a desire to learn more about these animal species and do what I could to help any endangered species from becoming extinct and doing whatever I can to assist in helping to provide a safe and livable habitat for these species that generations to come might enjoy them as well. Keeping that in mind, let's watch this short video clip of a zoology student who is overburdened with her studies when she decides to take a short break just to get away and reflect upon why it is that she wants to become a zoologist to begin with. The natural world is a beautiful place with so many incredible animals to study. I started zoology because of my love for these animals. But after two years of reading textbooks, my love has unfortunately faded. So I've come here to South Africa to reignite my passion for wildlife in their natural habitat. I'm really hoping that studying the animals here will help me get that spark back. Animals in a textbook are much easier to find than out in the wild. But after a good scan of the reserve, I spot a lone bull elephant. My ranger and I quickly head off to meet him down in the valley. Being so close to these gentle giants, it is clear how well adapted they are to the African bush. The trunk is a destructive tool used for foraging and feeding. Every aspect of the elephant is so much more interesting to observe in person than in the textbook. It's easy to forget just how big they are until you are on the ground with one walking towards you. Next encounter is with another of the large species here, the white rhino. Their horns, a prized adornment, are the cause of so many poaching events. Their eyesight is not the best, and with them struggling to distinguish a human and a tree at 200 metres, I have to watch my step. They have cup-shaped ears which make up for their poor eyesight. I next find the king of the beasts, the African lion. Lions hunt as a group to take down a variety of prey. This giraffe has clearly fallen victim to their incredible hunting ability. Being so close to the lions, I can see their impressive strength and just how easily their teeth go through the prey. Like domestic cats, lions spend most of their day napping. What a life to lead. 
After seeing such amazing sights, I still feel like something is missing. I'm not yet finding that excitement that I once had, that sense of wonder. Putting my notebook down, it's time to put the science aside and step back to simply being with the animals in front of me. Spending time out of the classroom and back in nature, I once more feel the amazement and sense of fascination I had for the natural world. Where these animals once only existed as a picture for me, I now have these wonderful memories of my time with them in the African bush. With my love restored, I can now finish my studies. The sooner I finish, the sooner I can be back with the animals once again, discovering the answers to their hidden secrets. <coughs>